Hello, everybody. So uh, this time, these are questions. I got it from your exam number two review. All right, so I went through the questions and I, I realized that these were questions that most of you struggled with. So I decided to take you through these problems. Okay, so get your sheets ready and let's get these questions answered. Are you ready? All right, let's go. So question number one. All right. So we are supposed to find the decay factor. So an unknown substance weighs that much when it was first brought to the lab, right? After a week in the lab, a technician weighs it again and finds it weighs this much, right? Now, to find the decay factor, there are two, um, there are two ways to find that. Is that okay? Now, for this particular problem, what you need to do is to is to use the formula, the new over the old. Okay, if you go to um, exponential decay and exponential growth, you will see this formula there. All right, so now, what is our new? This is our new value because this was what was weighed initially. All right. So the new is 15.89. And then the old is what? 35.96. Okay. So you do this ratio, and this should give you 0 0.44 as your decay factor. That's it. All right, if you want to reference where to find that, go to um, section number nine, under decay and growth factor, you'll find this formula there. And it's a very straightforward approach, okay? Nice. Now, number two. Okay, can we go to number two? Before I do that, let me clear that. So now let's look at number two. Okay, problem number two. I think it would be better if I write this way. So for problem number two, it says a particular type of mold is growing 9.7 per hour. Assuming that mold growth continues at this rate and there were 14 14,000 spores at 12 a.m estimate the amount estimate the expected number of mold spores at 1 30 a.m all right so this is a growth scenario so this is growing so we know that to find the amount for a growth the amount is equal to the initial right and then one plus the percentage increase. Increase and then to the T. Now, we know the initial amount, don't we? We know the initial amount to be 14,000. We do one plus. Now we have to change this to a decimal, just zero point. zero nine seven now it comes to the time now the time must be in hours between 12 a.m and 1 30 a.m what the time difference we have one hour 30 minutes all right so the t right there so one hour 30 minutes if you change one hour, 30 minutes into an into hours, that should give you 1.5. And you put that on your calc and your function. This should be your answer, zero, eight, six. Is that okay? So the key thing here is to change 
the time into hours. Is that okay? So one hour, 30 minutes will give you 1.5. So your T is 1.5 and that gives you the result. Is that okay? Nice. Number three, a smartphone depreciates 12% each year. Which of the following models uh, represents that for T years, right? So if the smartphone depreciates, again, this is a depreciation. That's not, this is not an increase. So we have to do the initial. All right, so the initial price is 450. The phone depreciates at that. Now change 12%. 12% into a decimal will be what? 0 0.12, okay? And then to the T. So Technically, now your answer is just 450, okay, 0 0.88 into the T, and that is your answer. Simple as that. Okay, now question number four. It says compute the absolute and relative change for the values below. Use the table to select the appropriate model for the data below. Now, when you have a problem like this, um, what you need to do is that you know that absolute change is the new minus the old, and relative change is the new minus the old all over the old, okay? And relative change is a percentage change. Now, don't forget that we had said that when absolute change stays the same, you have a linear model. And when relative change stays the same, you have what? An exponential model. So here we are going to find the, the absolute change and find a relative change, but I will just do two steps so that I know which one stays the same. All right, then I'll decide which model to use. So let's do the, the absolute change. So this is new minus the old. So 155.76 minus 138. Point five. That should give you 17.26 right there. Is that okay? And now if you want to find a relative change, that is 17.26 divided by 138. 138.5. 138.5. And that's about 12.46%. So this is 12.46%. Now let's do the absolute change for the second. Now 173.02 minus 155.76. Okay, this gives you that. Okay, and that now divided by 155.76 will give you zero point. So that's about, that's about 11.08%. Um, now, because absolute change, now then what, what do you get? Absolute change is staying the same, right? Now, because absolute change stays the same, this should give you an indication that we are looking for a linear model and not an exponential model. Is that okay? And you could clearly see that the relative, the relative change differs, right? So we are not looking for an exponential model. Is that right? So now your equation now becomes the rate of change, all right? which is 17.26x. And what is our B? Our B is our starting value. Okay, which is 138.5. And that is your answer. So now your answer is just that. Is that okay? So when you have a problem like this, find the absolute change, find a relative change. If absolute change stays the same, you are looking for an exponential model. And if relative change stays the same, you are looking for 
So let me say that again. If absolute change stays the same, you are looking for a linear model. And if relative change stays the same, you're looking for an exponential model. Is that okay? Nice. Good. So let's look at number five. So here we want the finance charge. What would be the finance charge? So the finance charge, okay. This should be, we have to do the APR, right? 0 0.2399. Now the APR is for the year. So we want the finance charge is for the month. So we divide that by 12 and multiply by the carryover balance of that. And now what do we have? That gives us $2.13. And that's the answer. So that's how you find the finance charge. Is that okay? So we are not looking for the minimum. So you don't use this percentage. Is that okay? So you use the APR to find the finance charge. Okay, now number six, the percent of working students increased 11.7% to 51.3%. What was the percent prior to the increase? Is that okay? So here you have to use the amount over the base is equal to P over 100. Okay. So it increased to that amount. So the amount, now your amount is 51.3, okay? And now because it increased by that, you have to add 11.7 to 100, okay? So 11.7 plus, 100 gives you that, okay. And now because we want the equivalence of the original, so we are looking for the original, right? Now, from there, you have to uh, cross product. Now this will give you 111.7. And when you cross product, your P simply gives you 45.9. That's your answer. Is that okay? Because it's an increase, you add to 100. Okay. And now the original, okay, or this, the initial is always equivalent to 100%. So that is what you have to look for. And your answer is 45.9. All right. Now, number seven. This is similar to example question number one. All right, where you, you have to use the new over the old to find the decay, uh, the growth factor, right? So this was the initial, right? This is the old and they find that, is that okay? So you have to do three, two, eight over 72. And that should give you 4.56 as your growth factor. Is that okay? So the growth factor, which is GF, is equal to the new over the old. So when you have consecutive numbers, the growth factor is the new over the old when you are dealing with consecutive numbers. Is that okay? Nice. That is when you are not giving the percentage increase for growth and you are not giving the percentage decrease for a decay. Okay, nice. Now, number eight. A typical combined harvester sells for that. If the value of the harvester depreciates by that, how many years will it take to lose half of its value? Half of its value. Is that okay? No, so this is the original cost of the combined harvester. So half of that 
half of 500,000. Half of 500,000 is what? 250,000. Now, if the value, so don't forget that we have the amount is equal to the initial, okay? And because we are talking about this depreciation, this is decay factor to the T. So the initial cost is what, 500,000. And we've been given the rate of depreciation. So this is one minus 0 0.0541. Now we want the time. So basically we are looking for the time. So one minus 0 0.0541. One minus 0 0.0541, okay. So right there, so really, if I want to simplify that, we have 0 0.9459 into the T. So we're looking for the time. So you just need to vary the T, okay? It's just guess and check, all right? You vary the T until you get 250,000. And you realize that when T is 13, that is when you get, it will depreciate to half of the price. So this is the 13 years. It will take 13 years for it to uh, depreciate to half of its price. Okay, so you use guess, guess and check to do that. Is that okay? Nice. Okay. Now, number nine. Let me look at that. Let me bring that right here, okay, to create space. So for number nine, you wanna find a balance for a deposit in an account with an APR compounded um, daily that is invested for five years. So don't forget that for compound interest, your balance, is the principal how much you invested, okay? And then you do one plus, now this is the rate. So this rate must be changed to a decimal, right? And then you divide by the number of times compounded in a year. And because it's compounded daily, okay? Because the compounding is a daily compounding, you have to do 365 because there are 365 days in a year. All right, then up here, you do 365 multiplied by the number of years. Is that okay? And this should give you the answer, which is 3968.8. So that is how you deal with that. I think there's another problem on compound interest that we'll be looking at, okay? So that is how you deal with this. Now, shall we go to number 10? Okay, so number 10, Jamal saves 2,000 to use as a down payment on a new car priced at 14,999, he's able to finance the remainder of the purchase price over five years at an APR of 3.5, right? Now, in this regard, you do not need Excel to get this problem done. And typically on your test, I wouldn't require that you use Excel, okay? So you have to deal with the information you have. So here, if Jamal pays, Three two three six point four seven each month. How much 
uh, will Jamal pay in car payments over the lifetime of the loan? Okay, so over the lifetime of the loan, Jamal is just going to pay how much he pays in a month multiplied by 12 because there are 12 months in a year and the lifetime of the loan, right? How much is that by five? Is that okay? So 236.47 times 12 by five, okay? And that is going to be, so over the lifetime of the loan, Jamal is going to pay this much on the car. Is that okay? Nice. Now, how much will Jamal pay in interest over the lifetime of the loan? So this is how much Jamal pays in total. But don't forget that Jamal is paying a down payment. It's making a down payment of $2,000. Is that okay? So if the value of the car is this much, all right, and Jamal made a down payment of 2,000. So now 14188.20, okay. Now Jamal made a down payment of that 2,000, right? If you take that out and then you take away how much he's supposed to pay, Okay, so if you take, so hold on one second. So now let's clear that. So if you take 2000, okay, so before I even use this, let me take 2000. We'll take 2000 from 14999 minus $2,000. Okay, so 14999. And it's $2,000. He'll be left with a balance of two, one, two, nine, nine, nine. Is that okay? So this is how much he paid initially on the car. So this is how much he has to service. Now, if you take this from that, minus 14188.20, one, um, that means that Jamal would have to pay an interest of that one, 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 eight, nine point two. Okay. So you take away his down payment and that's how much he has to pay over five years. Is that okay? Now you take this balance from how much he paid at the end of the period, all right? And this is the interest Jamal needed to pay on the car. Is that okay? Nice. So let's go to number 11. So Griffin is purchasing a home. He has agreed to pay 5.25, right? Over 30 years, his mortgage is that. So this is the cost or the value of the home. Now, if he pays 621.50 each month for 30 years, how much um, interest will Griffin pay over the lifetime of the loan? So this is how much he pays in a month, right? So we have to do 621.50 multiplied by 12 and multiply by the lifetime of the loan. And that is how much Griffin is going to pay over the period. Is that okay? So in total over the period, Griffin is going to pay, okay, 3740. Okay, so that's how much Griffin will pay over the lifetime of the loan. Now, we want to know the 
interest. Now, because this is the actual value of the house, to know the interest, we have to do two, three, two, two, three, seven, four, zero, minus the actual cost of the home, right? One, five, four, one, three, one. Okay, so now um, Griffin will pay six nine six zero nine in interest over the lifetime of the loan. Does it make sense? Okay, nice. Thanks. So number twelve, and uh, I think this is our last problem on this. So here as well, we're looking for compound interest and compound interest, the balance, okay, is the principal, which is, so Lori is five, two, nine, one plus, the rate is 0 0.3, okay. And because it's compounded monthly, this is compounded monthly, so we divide by 12. And now 12 goes up there and multiplies the number of years, which is six. Okay, and you can find the balance at the end of a period as So be very mindful how you enter uh, this in Excel because I've seen instances where students have had the mathematical expression right and not get the final result right. So make sure you're doing what is in parentheses, exponent that and multiply by that. Is that okay? All right. So thank you very much um, for your time. And uh, let me know if you have further questions. Is that okay? So thanks and do have a good day. All right. Bye.